Well, here in Tennessee, it looks like the calendar and the weather agree for once. It is springtime, and that means it's time to change up the daily carry. That's what we're gonna do in this video, so stay tuned. Thank you so much for the support. It has been amazing. We're about to hit 5,000 subscribers. I know I say that in every video, but I'm constantly excited about how much the channel is growing. And if you have not subscribed down below, my question, you know what it is. Why not? Why haven't you subscribed yet? It doesn't cost you anything and it really helps us out on the channel. We've got two videos coming that I think you'll really be interested in. One is on vintage knives and the other on wallets. Those are gonna be much bigger episodes and so that's why we're going with spring daily carry here in this video again thank you so much for your support and your comments back to the video all right so before we get to the pouch we're going to talk about what i'm carrying in my pockets so let's put this aside for a minute and we're going to talk about what i'm carrying in my pockets the blade that i'm carrying currently is the civivi elementum you guys know this knife it's incredibly popular and uh, I bought this one well over a year ago. Civivi has gotten in touch with me since the channel has kind of exploded. And uh, really, they wanna send me a couple of knives, so be looking for that in the future. But this one, I bought with my own money well over a year ago. This is the Beige Micarta, or Brown Micarta, whatever you wanna call it. And uh, the scales on this, very, very nice. They've aged very, very well. The blade is a stainless heel. It's not serrated at any type. I have been using, as you can see. And uh, I love the smooth lines of this knife. This is a great dependable knife coming in at about 50 bucks. And so you can sort of find it for cheaper some days based upon al Amazon's algorithm, but it's very nice. It's got bearings, so it really folds in very well. It's got a very smooth action, really nice knife. Okay, for the watch, a lot of you have been interested in the watch and the watches that I went over, especially in my grandfather's video, but the watch that I'm wearing is just a good old dependable Casio DW5600E. It's one of the best watches I've ever owned and I have replaced the strap on it, you'll see here. Uh, I've replaced the strap on it. I don't like it though, so I'm not gonna recommend it. I'm gonna replace it as soon as I possibly can. Uh, it's still more comfortable than the plastic strap that comes with it. But again, this watch is wonderful. It does uh, just tells the time, has a stopwatch. The only complaint that I have is the light. The light is is doesn't have a big button like the other G-Shocks do. And that's a little bit of a disappointment, but I'm working on looking at some other G-Shocks that I'm gonna pick up. And it's one of those things where if you buy one Casio watch, you kind of have to buy a bunch of them. And so I'm really loving Casio watches. I'm not a huge um, Apple watch fan. I used to be, wear my Apple watch everywhere. I know it's really good for working out, but it's just not my thing right now. The Apple watch that is not, not working out. On my keys, uh, I've got the largely the same setup that you've seen before. I'm still enjoying my Workerman Ultim key clip. And this is made of course of Ultim and it's yellow. It's it is fantastic, beautiful, and durable. Make sure you're on Workerman's email uh, list so you can get one of these. These things only run about $30. It's made of that high grade Ultim material as well. The other thing on my keys worth noting is the Olight Eye Mini. And this is just one of those really nice little keychain flashlights. It has a really good little light. It's a wonderful little light when you absolutely need it. It's got that magnetic closure. It's become so useful to me. This one's only about 15 bucks and it comes in black and red and you should absolutely check it out. For the wallet, I've been carrying the Bellroy Apex Slim wallet. Uh, I really like this wallet, um, but then I don't love it. Uh, and that will be the reason for the big wallets episode. I'm gonna go through a bunch of different wallets and give you positives and negatives of what I like about them. So be sure that you're subscribed for that. But it has been pretty nice, but it's got a few different flaws that you can take the cards out of the thing right here in the inside. It's got room for about six cards or so. And um, it's made of really high quality materials. I can't complain about the workmanship uh, and it's got a magnetic closure that's very satisfying. So I, I can't complain about it too much, but I'm still looking for that perfect wallet. And I don't believe this is it. And so I'm going on a quest for a new wallet and we'll see that in a future video. But this is of course the Bellroy Apex Slim wallet. So that does it for my on-person carry. Now let's go to the pouch. Now I will say this pouch does not live in a pocket. I don't put it in my back pocket. It's usually in a bag or in my car when I need it. 
and it's got a few really nice tools that I've been using and enjoying a lot in the day job and of course around the house as well. The pouch itself is a Garage Built Gear Mighty Pouch in brown wax canvas. Normally I'm not a fan of, of brown, but this one is really neat uh, because I managed to catch the drop, of course, and then I got it for retail, so I didn't have to pay some obscene eBay price or anything for it. And I managed to get this. It doesn't have any hook and loop on the front, but I love the, the clean lines on this as well. And the wax canvas kind of molds to your, your gear inside. You can see some of the outlines already here. I've only had this pouch for about two weeks now, and it's already creating some of those, those outlines as well. Very, very nice. That's the Garage Built Gear Mighty Pouch. Garage Built Gear Mighty Pouch Plus. So let's open her up here. I've got a Mighty Hanks handkerchief here. Very nice. And it's got microfiber on the other side, so I can use that to clean my phone, my glasses when I'm wearing them, uh, the camera lens, of course, computer screens, phone screens, very much comes in handy for all sorts of stuff. All right, so moving right to left. First is the pocket knife. I do want to have an extra blade on hand as well. This is this was passed down from my dad. This is his case rust lock knife. It's a uh, locking case knife. And if you look at the numbers on the blade uh, right here, it looks like it's from 2001. That would add up to about how long I think he had it. It's a stainless steel here. And you can see it's been sharpened a bunch of times. I love this knife, not just because it was my father's, but it's just really neat to carry. Um, when I have dress pants on for my day job, sometimes I'll take this out, put it in my pocket as my carry knife. And it's very nice to have. I love the, the aged bone here that you've got. This has a lot of variations on Amazon. I was actually able to find it on Amazon for about 75 bucks and a bunch of different variations. And so you've got wood variations and kind of a plasticky variations and stuff and the cost varies between 65 and 85 bucks on that but i love this knife i love how it's aged this will be in the pile of never selling these ever never um, because of course it was my father's and of course i don't know if you've seen my father's edc video he passed away in january of 2022 from covid and so really awesome to have some of his items and i just love this knife this tiny little thing tucked in here is some monkeys nail clippers. And I know what you're thinking, why do you have nail clippers? Well, it's just really nice to have these sometimes if I need to get some stuff off. I'm always working, always getting skin coming off, you know, the sides of my fingernails because I'm always getting rough, especially in the winter time here. And these fold up really compactly uh, into a very compact size. Plus they're the best fingernail clippers that I think that I've ever used. They're sharp. They actually cut the first time when you when you bear down on them. They're very nice. I really am enjoying these. So those are the Monkeys nail clippers. Now I have been using the Olight Oticle as a pry bar uh, and carrying it with me on my person several days a week. But when I need to fit something a little bit smaller, say into a pouch, I'm always gonna go for the all titanium TMP pry bar here. And it fits well here in the pouch. It's, I use it fairly often for smaller jobs of prying different things open. This actually, pry bars can come in handy. I work a lot on tower computers and taking tower computers apart and servers and different things like that. Really works really well to pry some of those uh, rusted together or hard to reach components that need to be popped off. A pry bar comes in handy in a lot of different situations. Inside this hitch and timber slip here, uh, which you can get on Etsy or on Amazon. I've just got a little paracord attachment here. I love little leather slips like this. I want to get a couple more of these to fit some of my knives, especially some of my dad's really nice pocket knives. I think it'd be cool to carry those around. This is the Big Eye Design Titanium Mini Side Click. And I love this little tiny pin. It clicks really well. It's very satisfying. It's all metal, all titanium, of course, and it writes extremely well. And then you've got the little side click buttons to where you can just do it. It's kind of a fidget toy as well. You just, it's really kind of nice, really annoy your coworkers, but it's essential whenever I need a good ballpoint pen to write something down in a field notes notebook or sign something at the bank or anything like that. The next two are strictly tools that I use. Um, 
nearly every day in the job now, taking again, taking apart computers, different things like that. This is the Gerber Armbar Slim Drive, and it's been pretty wonderful to have around. You can see that it kind of pops out to a full size driver here, and you can drive things as you will. You've got a um, exchangeable bit here for Phillips head or flathead. It is magnetic on the end, and so it does hold that in right there, so it's not gonna come out unless you just kind of slap it out and it's really not going to be moving. It's a very nice little Phillips head and a flat head there. You could of course replace it with your bit of choice if you're having to use any, but I mainly just use these two and it's really nice to replace that. It's got a few surprises in it and I say surprises, it's not really a surprise, but you've got a blade and a pretty good blade. It's about a 2.75 inch blade here and it's a stonewashed kind of a Warncliffe style blade and uh, it's pretty good. It's actually very, very good. And it does lock into place. Now, I don't know why the driver doesn't lock into place, uh, but it doesn't. I would like for the driver to lock into place, but I can understand how they got there with that and they didn't want that necessarily to lock into place. So you can probably use this as a, as a bar to do like this, you know, to pry it like this, use it as a sideways kind of um, screwdriver as well. So that's really handy. And then it's got one more little tool hiding up its sleeve. You got to pull it out pretty gingerly here at the end. It's just a bottle opener and a little, almost like a little pry bar here at the end. Very nice, uh, really cool tool. It's the Gerber Arm Bar Slim Drive. The next tool is one that you all recommended to me and I'm really glad you did. This is the Knipex Cobra 4 inch pliers and they're so adorable and they're so tiny, but let me tell you, these things have become already valuable in my toolkit EDC here, my daily carry pouch here. They're super tiny, of course, you can see. They're made of a very incredibly sturdy metal here, and uh, you can use this to pry and get small bolts off, even medium-sized bolts. It can expand, as you can see here on the other view, it can expand pretty wide for some pretty big bolts. So I'd imagine you could get some you know, 12 millimeter, 14 millimeter, 16 millimeter bolts in there as well. So incredibly well made and functional. Uh, add these to your EDC. They're not cheap. These are about 28 bucks. Add these to your EDC. You will not be sorry. Final thing on the inside is the light that I'm carrying right now is the Prometheus Lights Beta. This is the twist on version. Of course, the keychain version that you've got, you can pull it out right here and you can actually attach it. It's a really good attachment as far as really tough it takes me a, a lot of force actually to get that off, but it's got a really nice CRI rating. Now, if you don't know anything about CRI ratings, I really don't know a whole lot, but what I do know is that this light looks very nice when I'm shining it in the dark. It's got a nice even beam and it's got that 94 plus CRI rating. So it's going to look a little bit more high quality uh, than some other LED lights out there. I love the, the textured fins on this grip right here as well as the subtle Prometheus Lights logo there at the end cap. I love the minimal design here, and it uh, comes with a rechargeable AAA battery, but you can always swap that out for just a normal AAA battery as well. The Prometheus Lights Beta in the keychain version. You can also buy this top part right here. You can also buy a belt clip adapter for it. It's a little expensive though. I think it's about 20 or 25 bucks, and but it would be really nice to have that cap on there and it takes, it takes a lot of force to get that off. But I've really liked this light quite a bit. It's just a nice little twist on light when you need one. Not incredibly bright, but I didn't buy it to be incredibly bright. If I'm gonna use that, I'm gonna use a bigger flashlight. And last but certainly not least, as we turn the pouch over, you've got a zippered pocket here in the back. And inside that zippered pocket, I like to put uh, a challenge coin, a coin that's got significance to me. This one right here is my grandfather's coin from 1879. And so if you do the math, 140 some odd years old, this thing has been weathered. Uh, this is an actual one, not a reprint. My grandfather passed this one down to me and it's been significantly weathered away. Uh, these are not worth, uh, in, in really good condition, they can be worth hundreds of dollars, but this one right here in the condition that it's in is only worth about 20 or 30 bucks, but that's irrelevant to me. I love this dollar here. It's a Morgan, 1879 Morgan silver dollar. And uh, it's just a wonderful little trinket. In an age when my grandfather growing up in the 20s and 30s, uh, 1920s and 30s that is, would need money on him at all times. Uh, this was gonna come in handy. It's really neat to be able to have this in my collection. 
All right, I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you so much for being a part of the video today. Be sure to like and subscribe. Help us out on the algorithm. We're about to hit 5,000 subscribers. I hope you're on board. We're going to have some episodes about wallets as well as vintage knives coming up. So really want you to be involved with that. Sound off in the comments if you have any thoughts about some of the things that you're carrying and changing up your carry this spring. I would love to hear them. Keep it civil, keep it nice, keep it kind. Thank you so much for being a part of the channel. God bless you and have a great week.